Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a Spain News update. And the most nervous person in Spanish politics at the moment is opposition leader Pablo Casado because power brokers of that party are calling for his head. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation or by buying me a beer or a coffee. Many thanks for that. Thanks to people that bought merchandise and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your continuing support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, the most nervous person in Spanish politics at the moment is opposition leader Pablo Casado. Three and a half thousand people turned out yesterday in support of his nemesis, Isabel Diaz Ayuso, and now party power brokers are calling for his resignation, but he's trying to hold on to power of the party. And as we can see here, Pablo Casado holds out despite growing pressure from power brokers for him to step down. The unusual demonstration in front of the PP headquarters against Pablo Casado, which brought together three and a half thousand people on Sunday, according to the government delegation in Madrid, who chanted slogans against the popular leader, has further convulsed the PP. The question running through the main opposition party is whether a leader can survive a divorce with a part of his base, the one that supports Isabel de Ayuso, who gathered at the national headquarters to demand the resignation of its president. Despite the intense pressure he is under, Casado believes he is in a position to hold out. His intention is to resist. So main opposition party leader Pablo Casado under severe pressure to resign. And I don't think he was expecting three and a half thousand people to turn out and start abusing him in front of party headquarters in Madrid. But it's not surprising either, considering how fanatical some people are here when it comes to politics. Now, the internal crisis in the Partido Popular has been good for other political parties here in Spain. For example, the Socialist Party, because the heat has been taken off them, and also for right-wing party Vox, the main challenger on the right side of politics here in Spain, to the Partido Popular. And as we can see from this headline, the PP crisis sinks Pablo Casado and boosts Vox. The crisis that the PP is going through has sunk the party in the eyes of public opinion. Sigma Dos has updated the February edition of El Panel to reflect the earthquake of the last few days, and the verdict is devastating for the PP. Pablo Casado has lost his leadership, the party is suffering a huge loss of voters, and Vox is soaring, and for the first time disputing the PP's leadership of the right and the opposition to Pedro Sanchez's government. The analysis of the monthly polls of vote estimates carried out by Sigma Dos for El Mundo concludes that Casado's leadership has lasted little less than a year. So we'll see this week whether Mr. Casado can hold on to his position, or will he get the boot? And as we saw in that article, worrying times for the Partido Popular with the rise of Vox. Now a referendum was held yesterday in two towns in the autonomous community of Extremadura in the province of Badajoz to decide whether or not they merge together. And Villanueva de la Serena and Don Benito have agreed to merge in a historic referendum. The Badajoz municipalities of Villanueva de la Serena and Don Benito have said yes to merge in a historic referendum held this Sunday. The residents of Villanueva Serena said yes with 90.49% support while Don Benito registered a narrow 66.27% support. In order to go ahead with the process, it was necessary for support to exceed 66% in both. The union of the two cities will result in a municipality with almost 63,000 inhabitants, which will make it the third largest population in the region and the third in terms of gross domestic product. However, this merger process will not become a reality until 2027. So both towns getting a majority of voters saying yes to that merger over 66% of people voting in favour of the merger in both municipalities, even though one was at 90% and the other was just over 66%. But nonetheless, an overwhelming majority of people in favour of those two towns joining together. Now, the nuclear energy debate here in Spain is making headlines again. And according to this headline from News, most Spaniards believe nuclear energy is unsafe, and do not want a power plant near their home. Most Spaniards do not trust nuclear energy. This technology, which provides just over a fifth of the country's electricity, is considered unsafe or not at all by 51.6% of the population, according to the GAD3 survey for news. In contrast to this, just over a third of Spaniards have a more positive opinion. Some 22.2% of those surveyed considered it to be fairly safe, and another 12.2% rate nuclear power, which until last year, when it was overtaken for the first time by wind power, was the main source of electricity in our country, 
as very safe. So 51.6% of the Spanish population giving a thumbs down to nuclear energy. And given the cost of energy at the moment in this country, nuclear energy could be the answer to Spain's woes. But given the results of that survey, it's going to be pretty hard to convince the general population. Now, as we know, inflation is out of control in many countries around the world currently. I think interannual inflation here in Spain is currently around 6%. And that means that a lot of products that we buy on a daily basis have increased in price. And according to news outlet Antena Tres, these are the products that have risen the most in price over the last year. Inflation stood at the end of January at 6.1%, with respect to the same month of the previous year, one-tenth of a percentage point higher than the figure advanced by the National Statistics Institute, the INE. The price of electricity is 46.4% more expensive than a year ago, leading the ranking of the highest year-on-year -year increase. Oil follows electricity and costs 30.1% more. Diesel and petrol have also risen by more than 20%, by 25.7% and 23.1% respectively. Similarly, pasta has risen by 20%. Hotels have also become more expensive and now cost 18.1% more than a year ago. In the ranking, the next most expensive item is lamb, which has risen by 12.6%. It is followed by natural gas, 12.1%, flour, 10.6%, bank charges 10.6% and finally fruit 8.8%. So bad news for spaghetti lovers here in Spain with the price of pasta up 20% on a year ago. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation in Spain and we can see the accumulated incidence rate now down to 919. Hospital pressure remains at medium risk at 7.8% and ICU pressure is also at medium risk and now sits at 13.8%. Now, not only are prices going up here in Spain, there's also a chronic worker shortage. And as we can see here, worker shortage jeopardizes Spain's EU-funded recovery plan. When Spain's decade-long housing boom spectacularly bust in 2008, some 1.8 million jobs vanished, and a nation littered with cranes and building sites slid into a brutal recession. Now those construction workers are urgently needed back. An unprecedented labour shortage is jeopardising multi-billion euro building and renovation projects funded by the European Union to help Spain's economy recover from COVID-19. As elsewhere around the continent, Spain is short of at least half a million building workers, according to unions and companies. Firms are training new staff around the clock, paying better, and leaning on migrants from Africa and Latin America. So wouldn't you know it, a labour shortage threatening Spain's recovery from the COVID-19 economic downturn. Problem after problem after problem. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Daniel, the winner is Feijó. The Galician Premier will become the next leader of Spain if he wants it. Ayuso and Casado cannot lead the country. Unfortunately, all these young leaders are showing they are not fit for the job. Yeah, Daniel, thanks for the comment, and you could be right. Mr Feijó, the Galician Premier, could become the new leader of the Partido Popular at a national level. As we know, it's going to be difficult for Pablo Casado to continue as leader, and it's also going to be very difficult for Ms. Díaz Ayuso to continue in her position as the Madrid Premier, given those corruption allegations related to her brother. So some interesting times ahead for the Partido Popular, but Mr. Núñez Feijó in Galicia does seem like a safe bet going forward for that party. One here from Mr. Grimsdale, did you call people stupid who declined the influenza vaccination? Similar mortality rate of 0.03% in the past. No, because you're an hypocrite. Yeah, Mr. Grimsdale, thanks for the comment. And just a quick grammar lesson, we don't say an hypocrite, we say a or a hypocrite. And this all relates to something that I said last Friday when I called two Spanish actors desperate and stupid for trying to obtain a false COVID passport because they didn't want to get vaccinated and get a real one, but they still wanted to attend events where people are asking for COVID passports. Because if you are COVID-19 vaccine hesitant, and you get one of these fake certificates and break the law, because you want to participate in a society where more than 90% of the population is vaccinated, then you must be pretty stupid. But ah, that's right, the opinion of people like these two actors is that the majority of us that have gone out and got the vaccine are the stupid ones. One here from Sean, independent adjudication bodies tasked with assessing bids for and granting public projects might be a better way of going about it than allowing individual politicians to do it. If these bodies already exist, the problem and curse of corruption run deeper. Yeah, Sean, thanks for the comment and obviously referring to the contract scandal that is currently engulfing Madrid Premier 
Isabel Diaz Ayuso. As we know, last week, Ms. Diaz Ayuso's government was accused of giving contracts to companies with which her brother has a relationship. And on Friday afternoon, I think it was, she admitted that her brother had indeed received commissions from these contracts. She said that everything was legal and above board and doesn't understand why people are talking about this. And now the question is whether or not it is ethical for family members of politicians to be involved in government contracts. I don't think that it is, but supporters of Ms. Ayuso don't seem to have a problem with it. One here from Vincent, seems your penal code needs to be updated in Spain. We have teenagers that commit crimes and depending on the severity of the crime can be prosecuted as an adult in the US. Yeah, Vincent, thanks for the comment and related to a story that we saw last week about how a student stabbed a teacher three times in the back and wasn't prosecuted because he was only 13 years of age. And that was one of various violent crimes that had been committed by teenagers here in Spain over the last month or so. And maybe you're right, the penal code here does need to be revised so that 13 year old kids that commit crimes like this can be prosecuted. One here from Isabel. Hi Stuart, I'm Spanish, parents from Galicia, grew up in London. I would say I'm 50-50 in mentality. I teach English privately here in Galicia. Would love to participate in your videos. Thank you. Isabel, thanks for the comment and thanks for answering the call that I put out last week to get a female perspective on this channel. Somebody left a comment a couple of weeks ago saying that they would like a less blokey point of view given the fact that it's only me, Ivan, Nick and Johnny participating on this channel. So I'll be in touch shortly with you, Isabel, and we'll see if we can make it happen. One here from Murad. Hola, my wife and I are planning a trip to Spain this coming April, May this year. We plan to be in Madrid, Valencia, Granada, and Seville. We'll be there for five weeks. Love your videos. Yeah, Murad, thanks for the comment, and I hope all goes well with your upcoming trip to Spain. And the areas that you mentioned there, Madrid, Valencia, Granada, and Seville, should be fantastic at that time of year. But you might need to bring an umbrella because as the Spanish saying goes, in abril, aguas mil. And finally, one here from John, miss your jerky dog. Yeah, John, thanks for the comment and not sure what you mean by the word jerky there. I suppose that you mean that she's constantly moving around on the couch behind me and that is normally the case. But as you can see, she's very relaxed at the moment. I've got her booked in for a haircut this week because as you can see, it's a bit out of control at the moment. So hopefully on Thursday, She'll be looking a bit better. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. We'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.